after I reported to a couple of VPs on how we were doing, one of them asked me personally if I was doing anything interesting outside my job. And I said, well, you're not going to believe this, but I've read about 50 books on UFOs. And the amazing conclusion I've come to is that they are very real extraterrestrial craft. And the only thing that's uncertain is to whether we find out how they work before or after our competitor locking them. <laughs> after a moment of silence, one of them said, how much would it cost to take a look at that question? Therefore, we started a little project, kept quite low key, to study the question of how they worked. Everyone who worked on this project knew that when the project was over, each would go back to his other job and be laid off. This was when we needed to find someone to study the sightings and reports in detail to see if we could get clues as to how they worked. And we hired Stan Friedman. We should have a picture of Stan Friedman up there right now, as he looked in 1968. Right. We did a lot of interesting projects, such as measure the effects of a huge magnetic field on the speed of light. There was none. Interview an abductee. Tried to invent a physics that would permit travel faster than the speed of light. Developed an instrumented band. <laughs> developed an instrumented band to observe craft sightings anywhere, anytime, and spun magnets in space to try to change their weight. It didn't change. I also became friends with James E. McDonald, a physicist who was making a lot of noise and giving lectures about the details of highly credible sightings. Then the military overdue program was canceled in 1969. Dozens of people were being laid off. We were not making fantastic project, progress in our project. And I was assigned in 1970 to learn everything I could about radar and ballistic missile defense. We canceled the UFO project and moved on.